So we decided to go the surrogate route and we met the most amazing person to help us. Dr. Jackie introduced us to Shadina Blunt, yeah. who was our sur surrogate. So what was that decision like for you? I know I watched- Scary. Uh, I, well, I definitely, I saw on the show how you talked about in your own family to suddenly say you wanted to use a surrogate. Mm -hmm. Your own family said, wait a minute, what is this? You, why, why, that, <laughs> that baby will belong to the surrogate. All of these misnomers and myths about surrogacy. Because a lot of people don't really have the information, so they don't really know, and it scares you initially as soon as you find out, obviously. I mean, people are like, well, why you want to do that? And then they automatically think it's a vain decision, that you're just doing it because you don't want to, you know, come on, honey, I got money to get my body back together if I need to. <laughs> it's not a vain decision, you know? It <laughs> It wasn't that, but then, you know, the, you know, one of my um, family members kind of brought up, like, well, you don't think you're going to be, be able to bond with her? And it just kind of hurt my feelings. I didn't say anything, but it did hurt my feelings. But overall, I just think, you know, people have to be a little bit more right. sensitive when right. that subject comes up. I still get a little sensitive about it. No, but, but, I, but I'm happy you were so open about it because yeah. we don't see that often, especially, you know, on the show, the whole premise is you're living your best life. You may have some man drama here and there, right. but to hear you be so real and say, someone said to me I may not bond with my own child right. because of the route that she came into this earth, but right. she's still yours no matter what. And I thought right. about adopted children. I thought about children who, um, I was raised by my stepfather. Oh, you know, really? our bonds are not made in traditional ways. Mm -hmm. And you brought her in the way that it was meant for her to be in this world. Exactly. What made you decide to do that show? That is so funny you asked that. Um, back when they asked me, that was a long time ago, um, right before season two, they reached out. Um, no, Derek J, he's a friend yes. of mine. You know, who was on the show for a while. Yeah, he was right. on Hairstylist. And he was like, um, they looking for new people to be on the show, and I told them um, they need to have somebody with their own money, so I told them to call you. So I was like, oh, okay. okay. And I did the interview, but I didn't really think that it was going to be something that I would really do. Like, I didn't see how I would fit in with them, but I ended up doing it. And do you enjoy it? Here I am, 11 years old. You enjoy it? For the most part, I mean, obviously, I have we have our moments where I'm like, I'm, I'm not feeling this, but... Overall, it has done a lot of positive things in my life, just as much as, you know, I've had some bad moments, but I have had a lot of positive moments. Well, I think I met my husband on the show. Well, you did meet your husband on the show. <laughs> and you've been together for nine... My husband and I, we've been married for five years. It'll be six in um Six April. years. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's interesting because, to your point, what I've always thought was the genius part of your presence on that show is that you have turned it into multiple businesses. Uh, it's like, you don't just come on the show. You're like, now, according to, I think it was Kenya, you're the highest paid. And then you have branched off shows. To me, that's a smart business mind. Thank you're you. not saying, I'm just gonna go on the show and tell all my business. You're gonna go on the show, be a character, cast member, whatever, but now you're gonna use it to launch restaurants mm -hmm. and everything else. That's smart. That's what? leveling up to me. <laughs> Thank you. I made that choice after season one. Um, well, during season one. I mean, my first season on there, I came in on season two. But um, my thoughts were, I didn't think they would really change my life. But after being on that show, it was like I gained all kind of fans and stuff that had never heard of my music. Right. So I was like, OK. I was like, I'm not in it to just be popular. The popularity has to match the check. And right. obviously, the check needs to be bigger than what they're paying me. So I was going to, every year, if I don't benefit off of it in another way, then it's time for me to go. That's the way I look at it. So every year, people are like, you come up with something right. every year. Right. That is strategically for me. I have to have something I think year. that's so, and it's interesting. You talk about the music. There was an interview you did with Variety. And you said, I got used to putting so much of my energy into the show and my other businesses. I did not focus on myself as a music artist. Mm -mm. Um, did, so the, did the music take, because like, as I said earlier, you are one of the most successful writers right. in R&B. Right, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really write as much as I used to. I have a full studio in Atlanta and all of that, but I don't be in the, I'm, I'm not in the studio as much. I used to just like eat, live, breathe the studio. And um, now I'm doing so many things, so many different businesses. It's like when I do have time off, I'm so tired, I don't really want to go be creative. Yeah. But I said that I was going to change that this year.